so much, O oh God, for once again you have given us this opportunity to praise and magnify your holy name. As we sing hymns of praises, Father, the message in those hymns resonate in our hearts because we, fo we fully know, Father, how much you loved us, how much you continue to uphold us despite our many shortcomings and iniquities, Father. You have cleansed us and allow us to be worthy before your sight, to stand before you, to sing praises to you and to pray to you, Father. Please, Father, hearken to our supplications. Grant us once more, Father, everything that we need in life in order for us to use in giving glory to your holy name. Father, once again, we will listen to your words that will serve as our anchor so that we will always be grounded on the doctrines that we have received, that we will not be led astray or go, go grow cold in our faith, that we will continue in our sojourn, upholding your teachings and your commandments and living the doctrines in our lives. Father in heaven, please... Bless our brother whom you shall use as your instrument. Allow him to be able to be filled with his Holy Spirit coming from you. So that, Father, he will be able to teach us with clarity and power. That it will serve as our guide as we sojourn in this world. It is our fervent hope, Father, that you will be with us. Not only in our worship service, but throughout our life. For all of these things we humbly ask and beg. In the name of our Lord Christ Jesus. Amen.
Beloved brothers and sisters, this lesson that we are to study was made by Brother Iranya G. Manalo when he was still alive. And the title of it is that God's servants who completely hope in eternal life fight the good fight of the faith and are confident in their calling. We are all aware of the many testimonies God and Christ have regarding the true church of Christ. This is the church which the people of God truly belong. This is the church promised with eternal life. But to ensure the attainment of salvation with this promise of eternal life, we must prove ourselves to pass all these kinds of trials that may come into our lives, because if we will not pass them, we will be left behind. So we should be firm in our faith amidst the various trials that trials and hindrances that threatens or weaken our hope for salvation. What should those who hope for eternal life do to ensure attainment of salvation or eternal life? Let's turn to the book of 1 Timothy 6, 12. I will read, Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. What should those who were gifted this grace of the Lord Almighty God do so that they would have the share of eternal life? They should fight the good fight, brothers and sisters, the good fight of the faith. It's just not a matter of fighting for something, but you have to be sure that you're really fighting for your faith. In fact, there are people that when their family or their human rights are threatened, they fight for their human rights. There are those who fight for their families. There are those who fight for something that are valuable in their lives. How much more? If we were gifted this grace of God concerning eternal life, the more we should fight for our faith. Why? Because the conclusion of this matter is our eternal life. Is your eternal life really valuable to you, brothers and sisters? If it is, then we should do something about it. We should fight the good fight of faith. Now, according to the Holy Scriptures, what are these things that we should overcome? Because if we don't overcome them, we will be just likened to those, to the others who will not attain eternal life or salvation. Let's read Luke 8, 13 to 14, today's English version. The seeds that fell on rocky ground stands for those who hear the message and receive it gladly. But it does not sink deep into them. They believe only for a while, but when the time of testing comes, they fall away. The seeds that fell among thorn bushes stand for those who hear. But the worries and riches and pleasures of this life crowd in and choke them, and their fruit never ripens. Brothers and sisters, what are some of these things that were just mentioned here that may hinder an individual of attaining eternal life? Well, for those who have heard the words of God, our kind of seed are we that were planted, brothers and sisters? Are we amongst those who were planted on rocky ground? What's so wrong with that? Well, you may have received the words with gladness, but the words did not sink in deep, leap, brethren. Why? 
because when the final tests come or when testing comes, brothers and sisters, what is it that happened to those who are not able to pass the test? They fall away. Was there a great big test that the church went through in our time? Yes, we already know that. But in the midst of the test, brothers and sisters, for those who were rooted in their faith or rooted in their hope for salvation, brothers and sisters, they held on. If we just continue reading these part of these passages, they are the ones that were planted on good soil and they bear fruit, brothers and sisters. How about for the others? What kind of seeds are they? Which is the reason why they are not able to also attain eternal life on Judgment Day. The seeds that fell among thorn bushes stand for those who hear. But the worries, too much worrying in this life, what happened? They lost their hope and trust in God and the Lord Jesus Christ. So what else is it that hindered others, the riches? What are some of the riches of this life that this world have to offer? Well, if you get riches in a illegal way through stealing or to make you rich through uh, illegal recruitment, through bribery, through so many uh, ungodly way or through robbing brothers and sisters that will choke that individual and it will not bear fruit. So be sure that we are not amongst those who fall in this situation because we waste the greatest gift that was given to us is the promise of eternal life. And how is it that others are not able because uh, able to continue because of the pleasures? It's not wrong to have happiness in this life, but make sure the pleasures that you are doing are not something that will give judgment to you on judgment day. As it's written in Ecclesiastes 11.9, enjoy, young man, your youth. Follow the desire of your heart, but remember that God will judge you. So, Make sure when you are to enjoy yourself in this life, you are to do the things that are not against God's teachings. In this way, you enjoy life and you enjoy protecting the greatest of all, your promise of eternal life and salvation. Who, according to the Bible, will not be overcome by all these various trials and temptations but will succeed in fighting the good fight of faith. Let's turn to 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 9. I will read the answer. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Brothers and sisters, who are these that the Bible is mentioning that are able to surpass all these trials that may come into their lives? There's so many things that may have come into our life, especially when we were at that cross point in our life that we were being tested in our faith. Which side is it that we will take side with, with God's words or the man-made teachings, we chose our God. Even if we did not really know where we are to go, but we put our faith and trust in our God. And he was the one that guided us in what we are now as true members of the Church of Christ. So why is it that we are willing to surpass uh, or to sacrifice so much even if we are to be persecuted, to be oppressed, to be forsaken, to be struck down, brothers and sisters, because there is something in our minds that we would want to prove not only to ourselves, but to the Lord Jesus Christ and to our God. And what is this? Philippians, the chapters 3, verse 8. What is more, 
I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For whose sake I have lost all things, I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ. Why is it that we stood our grounds when we had to choose to follow the Lord Jesus Christ? Because we already know what Christ says in the book of John 10, 27 to 29. My sheep follows me and I'll give them eternal life that is in the back of our mind and that's why if you were to compare all these other things that may be lost uh, in your part brothers and sisters it is just treated as mere garbage in comparison in comparison to all the more which is even greater in our lives who is that our lord jesus christ and that's why we are willing to sacrifice, to be oppressed, to be persecuted. We're not greater than the Lord Jesus Christ. When our Lord Jesus Christ was being nailed on the cross, when he was given the crown of thorns for the sake of our salvation, when he bled or he shed his blood for the sake of those who will attain eternal life and salvation, brothers and sisters, all of that he set aside because he did want something to be done. The will of the Lord Almighty God. How important is that to God? God, it, God was able to be pleased with the Lord Jesus Christ because he did the things that pleases him as written in John 8 29 what are the things that pleases the Lord Almighty God on our behalf brothers and sisters if we prove in the time of being tested that we remain loyal and faithful to God and to the Lord Jesus Christ and that's why even if we were going through all these things in this life we were not completely destroyed they thought that if we are to be amongst those who will be expelled from the synagogues, it was not really uh, being expelled from the church before the sight of God. But we are only to prove that at that time is for us to be set aside as a small remnant that continues as the daughter of Zion to be true faithful members of the church of Christ. Yes, why did we go through all that? Why did we bear persecution? Why we, did we bear being cast away? Why is it that we bear all these other things that were done to us for the sake of which is more greater? Who is that? Our Lord Jesus Christ. So it is not a waste of time, brothers and sisters, to be uh, sacrificing for the Lord Jesus Christ, brethren, because what is this that the Bible is mentioning that is why that if you compare all these other things in this life that may be lost on our part it is just a mere it's just mere garbage uh, in comparison to winning the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's turn to the book of Philippians 3 20 to 21. But our citizenship is in heaven and we eagerly await a savior. From there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Why is it that if you are to compare all the things that you have lost, which may be considered valuable to you, but if you compare it to the Lord Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters, it is just compared as all those that you have lost is just mere garbage in comparison to winning our Lord Jesus Christ. Because what is at stake is your eternal life. Our minds is focused on the salvation and eternal life that will be given on the day of judgment. Why? Because our citizenship is where, brethren? Where's our citizenship? In heaven, right? So for those who have uh, citizenship uh, in a country, they're already happy. Oh, I'm a citizen of the United States of America. So they make a... Uh, 
they make so much uh, take pride and they are proud of that. Oh, I am dual citizen. I also have citizenship in the Philippines and in America. So how many citizenship do you have? Only two? Some of you have, or most of us that are listening here, our other citizenship is where? In heaven. What is your other citizenship? So there's already three. There are those that are attending, they're senior citizens. Eh? You have four citizenship, brothers and sisters. Would you say that uh, even though if you are a senior citizen and when you when you are in that state status, you start to feel all these other pain in your body, right? Start to get old and all that. But do you know when judgment day come, all those wrinkles that are in your face, what's going to happen? That will completely be removed. Can you imagine that? All those body parts of that aches that makes you feel sick. What's going to happen on judgment day? It will be transformed into a glorious body like the Lord Jesus Christ. Could you imagine your citizenship is not only on earth, it's not only, uh, but your citizenship that you have, that you all the more protect and keep is your citizenship where? In heaven. So that's why you fight for it. That's why when someone is trying to take it away from you, what is it that you do? You do all the best you can to protect and keep it because you know your citizenship in heaven will bring you to your eternal life your salvation on the day of judgment now is it really worth sacrificing for all this for the sake of eternal life if we're to compare all the things that we have gone through think back brothers and sisters before we even started to be uh, able to continue as true members of the Church of Christ before anything else happened, brothers and sisters, or in the process of it that when we were being set aside, brethren, compare those pain and agonies and troubles and trials that we went through. Look back of all the things we went through. If we are to compare all those hardships, troubles, persecution, and all those things that were done unjustly to us. And even until now, to those who are still there in prison because they were unjustly placed there, brethren, if we are to compare and enumerate all the agonies and pains that all had to go through, is it really comparable? to that glorious body that you will receive on Judgment Day, eternal life? Romans 8, 18. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So if you are to compare and gather all the sufferings that you went through in this life, for the life that is to come. Could it be comparable? No. Because this life is only temporary. And we know that when we have to rest in our journey. Whether we die or judgment day comes first. If you compare all those troubles that you went through in this life. It cannot be compared to the glory that you will receive on the day of judgment. So for those who remain true and faithful to their calling to our God and to the Lord Jesus Christ, because Christ says, my sheep, hears my voice and they follow me. What is the promise of the Lord Jesus Christ to all those who remain loyal and faithful to him? And that's why we took side in following the Lord Jesus Christ. In 639 of John, let me read to you what our Lord Jesus Christ have to say. In John 639. 
this is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. Brothers and sisters, what is true to those who remain faithful in following the Lord Jesus Christ, to all those who were given to the Lord Jesus Christ, who remain faithful and loyal to him, brothers and sisters, the desire of the Lord Jesus Christ is that they will be resurrected on that great day. Think of that great day when we are to hear the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ in the grave if we have already rest in our journey. And we will be resurrected to be given eternal life, to share in the glory that is to be given to all those who fought for their faith, who remain steadfast in the midst of all the things that may have come into their lives. They will be given salvation. But who were these that the Bible are mentioning that will be resurrected to life that were given to him? How is it that they are given to him? First Corinthians 1 9. Let's read here in this version of the Bible. I read, God is faithful who has called you into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Where could we find those people who were given to the Lord Jesus Christ that are promised eternal life or be resurrected on the day of judgment. They have fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ, with our Lord Jesus Christ. Others might say, we have our own fellowship with the Lord Jesus. I accepted him as my Lord and my Savior, and therefore I have fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Who or where could we find those who have true fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ so that they will be amongst those who are promised to be resurrected on the day of judgment to receive eternal life. Let's turn to Colossians 3.15, today's English version I read. The peace that Christ gives is to guide you in the decisions you make. For it is to this peace that God has called you together in the one body and be thankful. Where could we find those who have fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ who are called? They are called into the one body. We already know the body, brothers and sisters, Colossians 1.18, the church. And we already know the name of the church, brothers and sisters, in Acts 20.28, 20, is the church of Christ. But which those which of those who belong to the church of Christ will be amongst those who will be assured of their salvation and eternal life. These are those who continue to follow the Lord Jesus Christ that come with me in their life. For those who were overcome by richness and pleasures in this life, now they may be called members of the church of Christ. It's sorry to say that they will not make it to the finished life. It is sorry to say that they will not be resurrected for eternal life. Why? Because they chose the pleasures and the richness of this life over what is farther greater than them. Who is that? Our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why it's really worth suffering for the Lord Jesus Christ. It's really worth to always put investment for your Savior. He gave his investment when he gave his life for you. So when you are in the crossroad of being tested by our God and by your Savior, you have to prove your loyalty and faithfulness to him so that you could prove your loyalty and faithfulness as true members of the church of Christ. When you prove yourself as a true member a true member of the church of Christ. What does that only mean, brothers and sisters? Today's English version, 1 John 5, 11 through 12. The testimony is this. God has given us eternal life, and this life has its source in his Son. Whoever has the Son has this life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. That's why the church that the Bible is mentioning, the church that was redeemed by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, is very important because if you have Christ, and that's why it's called Church of Christ, then you have eternal life. But if you don't have Christ, then you don't have eternal life. But who among those who are called by that name that have Christ? We already know, brothers and sisters, we have been taught this so many times in our Bible studies, 
in our worship services. We are those who continued in doing what is right before the sight of God. Hence, we protect the greatest of what is gifted or given as a grace to us as our membership that will lead us to our salvation on judgment day brothers and sisters how do we know that this is a fact let's read ephesians 5 32 of the new testament modern english bible the marriage relationship is a great mystery by it, but i see it as a symbol of the marriage of christ and his church it's inseparable you cannot separate christ from his church but of course there may be those who may have joined the church but if they are not amongst those who have overcome all these other things then they waste the greatest opportunity of eternal life and salvation let us not waste what is given to us as only a grace that comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. But others, they are being envious towards other people because they see that they get rich, they get prosperity through means of a wicked way. And that's why they chose that route also that they may say that they belong to the church of Christ. But they, they started to see what the world is doing and how they're progressing in a ungodly way. They chose that route. Why is it that we should not choose a route that may make you prosperous in this life, but in an ungodly way? What's going to happen with all the riches of the other people that may have acquired richness in this life? Why is it that you should not be envious towards such people in the first place? Let's turn to the book of Psalms 49, 16 through 20. Don't be upset when someone becomes rich, when his wealth grows even greater. He cannot take it with him when he dies. His wealth will not go with him to the grave. Even if someone is satisfied with this life and is praised because he is successful, he will join all his ancestors in death where the darkness where the darkness lasts forever our greatness cannot keep us from death we will still die like the animals brothers and sisters why is it that we should not take that route of trying to be prosperous in this life even if it has to be in an ungodly way brothers and sisters because a rich person could not bring his wealth in the grave think of uh the richest people on earth. Uh, could you mention some rich people? Uh, you already know that, brothers and sisters. But do you think that, um, like for instance, e e Elon e Elon Musk? Is that, is that, you think that he could bring his uh, Twitter company in, to, uh, or his uh, or all his uh, other electric cars? <laughs> in the grave when he dies no right how about those uh uh who may have gained richness uh but yet when they will die to what are they also likened to just they will just like them to be anim like animals but brothers and sisters beyond all this if you really think about it you may not be the greatest you may not be the richest you may not have all this fame and wealth in this world but you have the promise of eternal life and you have proven your loyalty and faithfulness to your God. That's one thing that you could bring to your grave because on that great day, those who have done good will be resurrected to life and those who have done evil will be resurrected to condemnation as written in John 5, 28 to 29. So don't think your investment of doing what is right and what is good before the sight of God is just a waste of time. No, it's not a waste of time because you know that where you will go on Judgment Day is your eternal life. And who makes a promise of that? Let's read Matthew 16, 18. And so I tell you, Peter, you are a rock. And on this rock foundation, I will build my church. And not even death will ever be able to overcome it. Who makes the promise that not even death will overcome the true church built by Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ himself. When is it that a member of the church of Christ is promised not to be overcome by death, the second death, Revelation 20, 14. Because when he is a member of the church of Christ and he follows his Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, then he is promised of eternal life and 
salvation. So think of all those who maybe have become members of the Church of Christ, but have fallen short in being tempted by the richness of this life. Were they able to bring all their money down to their grave? They may say, but I, I, I may have died as a member of the Church of Christ. Am I not promised? But are you a true member of the Church of Christ? Did you do what you were supposed to do as a member of the Church of Christ? Or you were just a member of the Church of Christ by name? And that's the reason why you think that you are saved. But you are not. Why? Because the things and pleasures and riches of this life choked you. It did not bear fruit. Sorry to say, on that great day, instead of hearing the voice of Christ to be resurrected for life eternal, you will not hear that voice. Why? Because you did not do what is good. What is good? Brothers and sisters, Romans 7, 12, we already know what is good is the commandments of God. It's good and just. What does God command his people as members of the church of Christ? Do what is good, the Bible says. Do what is just, the Bible says, in the book of Isaiah 1.17. And what is this that is good? Help those who have been oppressed and the fatherless, the orphans, and listen to the plea of the widow. These are some of the things that God expects for his people to do. Now they are only few in number because they are only a small remnant because that's what is prophesied. Then we have to believe what God wants us to fulfill and do. So that we will be able to overcome all these other trials. And we safeguard, most of all, our salvation, our eternal life. Who is there to be with us when we are being tested? When that's the reason why we can say that we don't lose our faith or our hope, brothers and sisters, in trusting our Lord Almighty God, even when it have to come to the point that we have to lose everything, when we have to sacrifice our pride and dignity, when we had to make a choice of just saying, I'll follow you, Lord. Whatever may happen in life, I'll follow you. Why is it that we were able to make it? Who is there to be with us? 310 of Revelation. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. Who is the one speaking? Our Lord Jesus Christ himself. What is it that he promised? He promised that in the times of our trial, because we have kept his command to endure patiently. Weren't you enduring patiently when you are being mocked when you are being uh, oppressed and being said lies to, when you are being placed unjustly in jail, when you are being amongst those being evicted from your homes because you had to show your loyalty and faithfulness to your God, because you had to follow and choose the Lord Jesus Christ, when you had to make a choice that, that you should continue to take care of your parents when they are old and they are sick and they make you choose to do something else because they just want that their agenda will be fulfilled in their lives and for all those who whose lives were in danger for all the, the sake of being a faithful member you endured patiently all this when you had to start all over when you really have really not no experience for the longest time in doing such kind of work. Who is there who continue to give you the promise of always being blessed, even in this life and in the life to come? Wasn't it our Lord Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters? Yes, we are tested in every way. But why is it that we are so sure that we are not to lose our faith? Why is it that we can be sure that our God will hear us 
when we strive to show our loyalty and being faithful to the Lord Almighty God. In Job 8, 6 to 7, if you are pure and upright, even now, he will rouse himself on your behalf and restore you to your prosperous state. Your beginning will seem humble, so prosperous will your future be. So yes, brothers and sisters, when everything was taken from us, our humble beginning, we are so poor and in need. But what is the promise of our God to those who are faithful and loyal like Job? was faithful to his God, he will be blessed. So prosperous will your future be. Are you always wondering about your future, especially on behalf of our children? Loyalty and faithfulness, living a pure life before the sight of God means everything. Why? Because even now, he will rouse for you or he will arise for you. So that he will listen to your prayer. So being pure and upright. Living righteously before the sight of God. Has everything to do in how we can acquire our salvation or eternal life. So what is this one thing that we should never lose within ourselves. So that we can be sure that our relationship with our God will always be there. Let's turn to the book of 63, 1 and 2. Of the book of Psalms. I'll read to you here. You God. Are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being. Longs for you. I have seen you. In the sanctuary. And beheld your power. And your glory. What is this yearning feeling. That should never leave us. Especially when we worship our God. Our yearning feeling that we earnestly seek for God. Why is it that this feeling should always remain in us? Because sometimes we get so busy in this world. Sometimes we are distracted with many other things. But if we lose this yearning. Seeking God earnestly in our lives. Brothers and sisters. To what is it compared to those who would search for our God, especially during the time of worship service. Well, in a, it says, my whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. How do you feel when you are so thirsty? You search to find, to quench your thirst. What is your soul needing? Does it not need God? Do you feel so weary and so tired? And sometimes because of all the other things you have to go through in this life, you feel so weak and you just don't want to go on. Brothers and sisters, when you start to experience the presence of God, especially in our gathering, then you will be able to find that strength because you will Beheld the power, the Bible says, and your glory. You will be able to experience his power. And that's what we truly need, brothers and sisters. Why are we so sure that after all that we have gone through, our loyalty and faithfulness to our God, that we will not say that it was just a complete waste of time. Let's turn to 37, 27, 28 of the book of Psalms, I'll read. Turn from evil and do good. Then you will dwell in the land forever. For the Lord loves the just. And he will not forsake his faithful ones. Why is it that we are so sure? That we will not be at a loss when we have proven our loyalty and faithfulness to our God. The Bible is clear. What will God do 
to those who chose to do what is wrong, to those who chose to do what is not upright before the sight of God. Now they may say that they're members of the church of Christ. Brothers and sisters, wrongdoers will be completely destroyed. But how about the offspring? Uh, how the, how the, also their offspring? Even their offspring, they will perish. The wicked will perish. But on behalf of those who remain loyal and faithful. What does the Bible say? The Bible is clear that those who do good, they will dwell in the land forever. For those who have done evil, when the Bible ceases to do evil, if they listen and start doing good, they have also the, uh, the opportunity for them to change so that they will also dwell in the land forever and what is this that god loves he loves those who practice justice those who are just and those who are faithful to him he will never forsake did god forsake us when we were faithful to him you know the answer to that you already know how god God guided you and guarded you and protected you and kept you safe. You already know how he lent his hand to you or to us when we were in our troubled moments of life. He already knows what we have gone through, but we showed our faithfulness and loyalty to him. Why? Because we would want to spend our eternity and see our God on judgment day. We would want to spend our eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ in the holy city because that is the promise to those who will do good. They will dwell in the land forever. That is the promised land where there is no more death. There will be no more sorrow. There will be no more pain. There will be no more agonies. There will be no more persecutors. There will be no more of all these troubles because all things have passed as written in Revelation 21. Through four. So don't think, brothers and sisters, that it is a waste of time for you to continue faithfully in being a true member of the Church of Christ. Maybe in this life, we may not be fortunate enough like other people may be, but in the life to come, it's a great fortune that is waiting for you, your salvation, your eternal life on Judgment Day. So as a conclusion... Here in this lesson, we therefore should fight the good fight of faith. Let us resolve to overcome everything that may ruin our faith. Let us hold on firmly to God's promises. Let us patiently endure all the hardships that we encounter to remain steadfast in our faith as true members of the church of Christ. Let us stand and we will pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you once again for giving us this opportunity for realizing that our investment in our sacrifices, in what we do for fighting for our faith is not a waste of time. Maybe others may not see this, but you see what we have gone through and we felt your guidance. We felt your protection in the process of going through all the troubles and being persecuted until we have reached the status of remaining as true members of the church. Oh, Father, our greatest wealth is you. And we will never exchange you and our Savior for any kind of pride or fame and wealth of this world. Because there's nothing that could be compared to our eternal life that we was given as only a promise through your grace and mercy. Because there are many others who may be worthy of such blessings, but whatever you have seen in us, oh, Father, we are grateful, we are thankful, for we belong to you. As long as we belong to you and you embrace us, even if we have to go through so much sufferings, we will always follow you. As long as you are our God and we are your people, we will remain loyal and faithful to you, come what may, so that we will all the more continue in honoring and glorifying your holy name. Dear Lord Jesus, you are the first one to demonstrate in how you were faithful to your God. 
and how you denied yourself when you had every right not to follow because you did not sin, but you chose to follow so that the plan of God concerning you and for us to receive this grace of salvation and eternal life will be gifted to us on that day. Oh, Lord, thank you so much for your kindness. We don't often think of all your sacrifices. But if we come to stop and think of what you went through, then when we go through persecution, when we are being oppressed, it's not comparable to what you went through. Because every suffering that we may have gone through in this life, we will compare it to the glory that is to be given on Judgment Day. It's uncomparable. How we would want on that great day that we are amongst those whom you will choose to enter the kingdom of our God. How we would want that on that great day we are among those who will rest in our journey. How among us we would desire to spend our eternity with our Father. Remember our loved ones who have not yet been called into this calling of worshiping and serving you and our God, so that we could be together also not only on earth, but with the new earth and the new heaven. Father, we return to you and ask forgiveness for all the sins we have committed, for all the shortcomings we have done. We are deeply sorry, dear Father, if we may have hurt you for all the things you have done good to us. If we come to stop and think and say that we have done wrong, it's not really something that should have been done on our behalf. So we ask forgiveness. Please cleanse us to be worthy people of yours. And please bless all our loved ones who are near and far, who are journeying or who are going to other places. Please take good care of them. Father, so that they will come back safely with us in serving and worshiping your holy name. Father, we ask everything in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. and salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of us now and forever. Amen.